a cool bracing day, perfect for a round or two of spirited calisthenics, don't you think? Brain over brawn is my motto, but a bit of exercise can be just a thing to keep the blood flowing to the brain. That is, so long as it's not some backwards medieval tournament sort of business. And if it is, well, I hope there's someone else responsible around to supervise it, because I will not be attending. Let's welcome Queen Eleanor. Gracious, are those willow the wisps I see? Well, I suppose you might call them something else, depending on your point of view. A pixie light, perhaps, or a hobby lantern. Or, if you're of a scientific mind as I am, you'd likely call them naturally occurring chemiluminescence. But one thing is certain, whatever they're called, they're most certainly worth following. Let's investigate the wisps. Merida! Merida! Oh, Michi me. I know she hasn't truly taken a princess must be punctual to heart, but I thought she'd make an exception for today. After all, this event was her idea. After the last games were <clears throat> interrupted by circumstance, Merida had the notion to reschedule for later in the season. I thought it was a grand idea. After what we've all been through, it would to the clans good to come together in celebration. We planned it together, she and I, each and every detail, including how she'd lose the ceremonial first arrow. Which she isn't here to do. <clears throat> Her penchant for lateness certainly isn't from my side of the family. Let's send Queen Eleanor to look for Merida. Modi caught up to me with some news while I was out searching. Not only is Merida late to the games, but the Lords MacGuffin and Macintosh are early and up in arms about treachery. Oh, and Lord Tingle may not be coming at all due to being, quote, menaced by hobgoblins whilst on the way. <sighs> But of course, resolving situations such as these are part of our duties, which is why Merida should be here. She needs to learn to solve such problems herself. Of course, I know now that magic could have something to do with this, and there's only one person I know of who can tell me. Let's build the definitely not a witch's cottage. On behalf of Clan Dumbrock, I thank you. <laughs> 
someone I've never actually met in person and whose home has the pesky habit of not existing when one's looking for it, and which on reflection may or may not still be in ruins from a cauldron explosion? Hmm. If the cottage is there and the will-o'-the-wisps choose to lead me to it, so much the better. Then again, I know from experience how elusive they can be. Regardless, I'm quite sure I can retrace my steps once I reach the Ring of Stones. It's not as if that day wasn't memorable. Let's send Queen Eleanor to visit the witch's cottage. Well, the cottage is there, but the witch isn't, so I suppose I'm left with two options. One, fetch her, which would take weeks and risk upsetting our delicate relations. Or two, forgo the respite from diplomacy I was hoping for and solve everything myself, as has become routine. A shame, really. I hear the Outer Hebrides are quite nice this time of year. However it is I'm to fix all this, I'd best do it quickly. I don't even want to think what the lords of the clans will get up to without someone reasonable to keep an eye on them. Let's welcome Lord MacGuffin. It's an outrage is what it is. It's an outrage and I'll not stand for it. That scoundrel Macintosh has gone too far this time. A foul presence has stalked us ever since we left MacGuffin lands. Hunched figures lurking in the shadows, the clattering of armor almost out of earshot. It can only mean one thing, the people of Clan Macintosh sent to cut short the MacGuffin family line for good. I knew he was plotting something ever since he gave me a sinister glance as we sailed from Dunbrog. But to stoop this low, let's send Lord MacGuffin to keep a watch for threats. Oh, there, that rustle in the bushes. I'd bet that's one of the manky dogs now. Well, I won't be caught off guard that easily. I wouldn't have left young MacGuffin home to guard the castle otherwise. I'll not have McContish armies overrun our lands while I'm away, or fall to a surprise attack here either. I'll track him to his lair and make him answer for his treachery, on the honor of Clan MacGuffin. There's the scoundrel slayer now, and a tumble down place it is too, a fit hiding spot for the treacherous galoot. Well, he'll rue the day he chose to take up arms against Clan MacGuffin, I'll see to that. Let's send Lord MacGuffin into the witch's cottage. For the glory of Clan MacGuffin. First, I'd best return to the castle. It will be a fine place to calm the Lord's nerves before they do anything too foolish. And if the worst should happen, I'll be somewhere siege-proof to wait out whatever war they've decided to start. Let's build Castle Dunbrog. Ah, it's always a bunny view. 
coming out of the forest to see those grand stone walls. It's a rare thing, you know, a castle built of stone. When I first moved here, I could hardly believe it myself. And it certainly keeps the drafts out far better than wood, and invaders as well, for that matter. Let us hope we'll only have to worry about the former for the moment. Oh dear, Merida said she'd help decorate the great hall. And with her gone, that only leaves. <sighs> I'd best make sure everything's in place and that Maudie hasn't fainted away from panic. Let's send Queen Eleanor to prepare the castle. It can't be. No, no. But I can't deny what I've seen with my own eyes. I trapped it in a dark corner before it skittered away. It was no man at all, but a bestial form low to the ground. I cannae believe it. Not only does McContish have designs on my life, he's allied with Kusits to take it. I know I sound daft, but it's the only explanation for all this. I'd never have considered it before, but after seeing the queen turned into a bear, who could doubt that magic exists? Not Macintosh, clearly. I can only imagine his glee when he realized he could use magical means to move against me. And he's chosen a fearsome ally for the task. The Gooset is said to be a terror of the northern moors. A great green hound capable of striking a man down with the force of its piercing, unnatural howl. I'm reasonably sure that's what I saw in the cottage. It was very dark. Let's send Lord MacGuffin to ponder his next move. Right, it's settled then. I cannae stand idle waiting for a fairy hound to mark me for doom. Nor can I let Macintosh know that I'm onto his plan. That would rob me of the element of surprise. No, the best thing to do is attend the games, pretend I don't suspect anything, and at the right moment call him out to his smirking, woad spattered cop for all the gathering to see. Ah, I can imagine the look on his face already. Utter humiliation. At least the tournament's grounds are in order. There's still a while yet till the games begin, but that's one less thing to... Oh, good morning, Lord MacGuffin, and welcome. I... Uh, I was told you had a matter of some concern that you wanted to... Not now. Oh. Got to practice. I see. See how accurately I can toss a caber when a man's head may or may not be in the way. Ah, uh, well, that's not ominous at all. There. Everything sorted, more or less, and a good thing I was there. The last time Glen Dingwall's standard was hung crooked like that, it nearly started a pitched battle right in the courtyard. I do believe that was among the least chaotic celebrations we've had. There's a way to throw a 20 foot long large wood pole more murderously than usual. I'm dismayed to say that Lord MacGuffin has discovered it. Not that he's been particularly subtle. Ugh, oh, Merida cannot get back here soon enough. Enough practice for now. There's something I've a mind to check on. 
If Glad Macintosh can conspire with forces not of desert, there's nothing to say the others can't do. Let's send McCuffin to investigate Castle Dunbrock. That settles it, I. Oh, down you beasts, down! I'm not your supper, and I don't plan to. <clears throat> Lord McGuffin, I see you've been reacquainted with Fergus's deer hounds, then. Ah, uh, um, I, I, I have. We bit territorial, aren't they? Yes, they keep us quite safe. And unlike some breeds I could name, their howling won't strike you dead within a fortnight. Oh, overheard some of my musings at the tournament grounds, eh? My apologies, my lady queen. Now, my lady queen, you know I'm not one to draw about wild accusations without cause. But faced as I am with proof of a malicious fairy hound in our midst, I cannot be silent. Oh, I've never once expected silence of you. <clears throat> Very well, if you do have evidence of this claim, please make it known. At once, my queen, follow me to the beast's lair and the truth will be clear as day. Let's send the queen and MacGuffin to the witch's cottage. There, there's the spot, deep in the blackest shadows of that hut, it lurks. Behind me, my queen, I'll protect you. Protect me? From an empty room? What? Where did it... <clears throat> lurked. Deep in the blackest shadows of that hut, it lurked. Previously. Slip of the tongue. I'm sure. I admit I've been mistaken. It's quite clear that Clandon Brock hasn't set a coup sit on me. Excellent. And may I say, Lord McGuffin, it's a relief to hear you say so. Which makes it all the more clear that Clan Macintosh has! What? Och, I can only imagine what fall deeds that treacherous traitor must be plotting, even now. Let's welcome Lord Macintosh. It's vile treachery is what it is, vile treachery, and there's only one clan to blame. I'd sooner trust my life to a giant board than to trust it to a MacGuffin. I sensed them lurking, watching me from the shadows. First I thought they were assassins sent by MacGuffin, but then I thought that's just what MacGuffin wants me to think. And then I thought, what if thinking that is what he wants me to think instead? Oh, I bet it is, the manky old bull. Now, it's three days later and I'm sure that McGuffin has sent a bloodthirsty redcap to murder me in my sleep. Let's send Lord McIntosh to watch out for the redcap. Ha! There! Taste the sharp end of my mace, you fall-hearted goblin! You- Oh, wait. That was a robin. Well, you can't blame me for being watchful when there's a malevolent goblin with a pike staff on the loose, now can you? If he does soak his cap in his victim's blood, as they say, it won't be the blood of a Macintosh. Well, Lord McGuffin stalked off to who knows where. I can hear Lord McIntosh nattering on about redcaps from the bushes. And the games were meant to have started an hour ago, so it looks as if I'll have to manage this without... Hmm, that's odd. 
I'm sure that bit of splintered wood wasn't there on the ground before. Is it twitching? It is. Well, the games can wait another few moments. Let's send Queen Eleanor to investigate. Oh, I'm tired of jumping at shadows. To defeat this otherworldly fiend MacGuffin set on me, I'll have to outsmart it. Think, what else do the stories say about the red cap? Anything that could tell me its weaknesses? Long sharp talons. Fearsome eye, but unhelpful. Boots made of iron. Irrelevant. Unless I want to kick at its chins. Wait, aha! That's it! The clue that will lead me straight to the beast's den. Let's build the ruins of the kingdom. A tribute to Clan Macintosh. Queen Eleanor's a fine woman indeed, but far too trusting for her own good, which means it's up to me and me alone. Until a certain traitor arrives at the tournament grounds, I'll slay any fairy assassins that may precede him. In between tosses of the caber, of course, I didn't a plan to give Macintosh the satisfaction of my forfeit in the game. Let's slay... uh... fairy assassins? So, after some examination, I've discovered a trail of twitching wood splinters all through the forest. Which means either Lord Macintosh and Lord MacGuffin were right all along about magical beasts, or... No, no, saying it out loud makes me realize how vanishingly small of a possibility it is. And I'd sooner believe we've been invaded by mad stonemasons than give credence to those two. The trail of splinters leads all the way to the castle's back entrance, and it looks recent. Whatever's caused all this bedlam today, I have a feeling it's behind that door. I'd better open it quietly. Lord MacGuffin's been stealthily tromping behind me whenever he thinks I'm not looking. If the clans ever need to appoint a spy master, we'll be sore put. There's not a clandestine soul among them. Let's send Queen Eleanor to sneak into the castle and let's send MacGuffin to try to keep taps on Eleanor. I can't believe I didn't think of it before! Red caps hound ruined castles, especially castles that were home to wicked deeds. Of course, they are said to prefer ruins far to the south of here, but this one, ah, this one could have moved! I, and likely at MacGuffin's personal request too, that great Calumphing ox is practically a lowlander himself. Och, best forget you heard that, some accusations are too grave even for me to make. There's only one cursed ruin I know of near here. I, I bet that's where I'll find the red cap. Doing away with it will be a challenge, of course, but I'm more than prepared. The tales say the red cap is unaffected by human strength, but they don't say anything about immunity to great spiky clubs. Let's send Lord Macintosh to charge into the ruins. Uh, 
I think I scared it uh, away somewhere in between crashing through the floor and uh, shattering every piece of crockery in the cellar all of which I might add hide it uh, on purpose besides I can't be responsible for the consequences when I'm ablaze with righteous battle fury Oh, the red cap itself may have eluded me for the moment, but the man who sent it, well, I know exactly where he is. And I've a long walk back to the tournament grounds to plan what I'll do about it. Let's send Macintosh to plot MacGuffin's downfall. How do I know this isn't some sort of trick? There's a scratching noise coming from inside the trophy room. Who could have gotten in there without the guards knowing? Hello? Is anyone... Hello, mum. Sorry I'm late to the games. I'll run over there now. Please don't go in the trophy room. Love you. Goodbye. Um. Somehow that was even more ominous than Lord MacGuffin's remark about the cavers earlier. My battle plan is set. I'll join in the games, act as normal, then trip MacGuffin in a pile of manure for all to see. It's simple, aye, but that's the idea. It's so simple, MacGuffin will never expect a genius like me to come up with it. That's just elementary warfare tactics, that is. Ha! No more suicide attacks, and I've heard far less of them fluttering about in the bushes too. My fearsome demeanor must have scared them off before they dared assault me again. Or could some mysterious third party be slaying them in my stead to clear the way to strike at me themselves? This can only mean one thing. Dingwall treachery is afoot! He must have had it out for me the whole time. I'd stake my favorite spare on it. I, Merida, firstborn descendant of Clan Dumbrog, hereby declare these games open. Merida? <clears throat> May the competition be as spirited as it is honorable, and may it roar glance closer together in friendship. I went into the trophy room, Merida. Not now, mum! Uh, and may the best man or woman win! With a fine display of skill at arms from Lord Macintosh, we are at a tie. All without starting a war. Well done keeping them focused on the games instead of each other's throats, Merida. Oh, thanks, mum. You're very welcome. Now tell them to take a break so you can explain to me what I saw in the trophy room. Uh, yes, mum. Now, everyone, to the refreshment stand for drinks and cakes. Merida said she'd speak to me after a quick trip to the refreshment stand, but she's certainly taking her time about it. Either she's putting off having to tell me what she's been up to, or... 
Well, I'm quite sure she's done with magical cakes, but if she does bring me one, the two of us are sharing it. <laughs> Let's welcome Merida. Mum, hello. Sorry for taking so... Uh, I brought you a mug of barley water. Not magical this time, I swear. That's very kind of you, Merida. Thank you. Now, why was the trophy room crammed full of half-broken carvings of bears? And why were they moving? Aye, that. <sighs> I thought you might be wondering about that. Huh, mom took that, well, I mean, I really was trying to do the responsible thing, cleaning up my own mess like that, but I was sure I'd get an earful from her anyway. I guess she really does understand me better now. Aye, she wouldn't have trusted me to make peace with the lords otherwise. I've done it before, I can do it again. All I have to do is march back out to the tournament grounds, get their attention and... Where did they go? Let's send Merida to try to track down the lords. I'd almost forgotten I actually bought all her carvings until her crow came to deliver them. All of them. I knew you'd be cross so I hit them in the trophy room, which worked, for a while, until they started moving and escaping. I didn't want them to cause a panic and ruin the games, I know how important gatherings like this are so... So you tried to drag them all down as quietly as you could? Uh, yes mum, I'm sore. I'll stop the other carvings. You explained to the lords, and your only mistake was not telling me earlier. So apology accepted. Let's stop the enchanted carvings. Where did they go? Ugh, I was only gone a few moments. Brilliant. Two heavily armed overgrown numpties snuck off to murder each other in the bushes while my back's turned. <sighs> well, I suppose now's as good a time as any to work on my tracking. I'll probably be able to find them from the smell alone. There's no trace of him leaving the tournament field, so I'll have to think this out. Let's see. They're both spoiling for a fight with the other, and they both think the other's in league with dark magic. Ah, got it! Let's send Merida into the witch's cottage. I know my fate lives within me now, and I promise I'm brave enough to see it. So, in summary, no red caps, no suicide, but a whole kaggle of enchanted handicrafts. Which, again, were my fault and not sent by either of you to kill the other one of you. Are we clear? <clears throat> yes, princess. <clears throat> As class, princess. Good, and if you're still that set on having a go at one another, at least wait until after the games are over to do it. There, not the most diplomatic peace negotiation, but it'll do. Phew, that's a job done. If you told me this morning I'd have spent today chasing after enchanted wooden bears, well, I'd likely have believed you. These past few months have broadened my perspective somewhat. 
and they've clearly had their effect on Merida too. She's grown up quite a bit. A year ago she wouldn't have even tried to smash so many wood carvings, not out of considerations for my feelings, that is. Grievance! That's a very odd thing to say out loud, isn't it? You're back early, and from the lack of shouting and clanging from the forest, I surmise you've been successful. Aye, successful enough anyway. They may be at each other's throats later, but for now, they are fast friends again. Good, that means there's only one thing left to do. Oh no, what is it? Did the bears put themselves back together and come back to life again? I knew it! No lass, preparing the tapestry for the Dunbrock clan tent. After all we've been through, a little quiet time would be nice. Let's send Merida and the Queen to work on the tapestry. There, a testament to the quality of Dunbrock craftsmanship and to what we can do when we work together. Hi. If you can get over my scatty patch in the middle. Merida dear, as I always say, there's no shame in making mistakes, so long as you try your hardest to fix them. I'm not sure you've always said that, but I agree. Though, mum, do you have the feeling we're forgetting something? Hello? Does no one hear me? I'm being followed by a hobgoblin! They may not have attacked in a spell, but I'll not move from the spot till I'm sure they're gone. Welcome to Princesses Unplugged, my pirate radio podcast where... You know what? I've been doing this for a while. Look it up! Anywho, we've got Merda in the studio with me later. She's gotta finish up some sporting she's been doing first. So, until she gets here, hope you like ads for mattresses and fancy socks, because I've got loads of them for you. <laughs> Let's get Merida's comfy costume. Show, Merida. Hope you're ready for one tough interview, cause I sure am! Hi Vanellope, it's grand to be here and I'm happy to answer any questions, or we could always talk about archery. Uh, okay, is it just me or... Oh, my mum's really been focused on my elocution training. Ah, got it, makes sense. Before we start, do you have any snacks? I'm starving, 